Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, we are joined by several members of our team, APD Chief Rodney Bryant, APD Deputy Chief Charles Hampton, Jr., APD LGBTQ Liaison Senior Patrol Officer Eric King, APD Deputy Chief Michael O'Connor, Deputy Chief Operating Officer LaShondra Burks, Malik Brown, our Director of LGBTQ Affairs, City of Atlanta, and also Dr. Carlos Del Rio of uh, Emory University, Rollins School of Public Health. Um, have I missed anyone? All right. So there are two things we're going to talk about today. Uh, one is crime and the second is COVID. I'm sure that you all will have a lot of questions about the mask mandate and we are very fortunate to have uh, what I call Dr. Del Rio as our COVID angel in the city. He has been uh, an advisor to us answering our calls day and night on questions big and small about COVID. So I'm grateful that he's taken time to join us today. You all, you all have heard me refer to this COVID crime way that's been sweeping the nation. And I've given it that description uh, because we are seeing acts of violence that we haven't seen in decades in this country. Uh, primarily, these interactions are between people who know one another. Uh, all acts of violence are senseless. Uh, but one that struck a chord with all of us was last week uh, with the murder of a young man, Jakari Dillard, who should be preparing for his senior year in high school. Instead, his family uh, is preparing to bury him. But we've also seen a murder in our city, uh, the likes of which we have not seen in quite some time. Um, and I don't put this in the category of the COVID crime wave. This does not fit the description um, of anything that we've seen, primarily the violence that we've seen over the past year has been between people who know one another, uh, people who have some type of interaction, and the vast majority of our murders have been as a result of gun violence. There was a horrific murder um, of Catherine Jonas, uh, the victim who was found at Pete Mont Park. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we still don't have all of the information that we need in her murder to make an arrest. I mentioned Jakari. We um, have an arrest warrant, and I will let a chief speak more in details about that if you all have any questions, because we knew who the perpetrator was um, almost immediately. Uh, with Ms. Jonas, we are still seeking help from the public. And what I ask you as members of the media is to please be responsible in what you are reporting. There are a lot of rumors that a lot of false information, a lot of false information that is being spread. It is not helpful to this investigation and it makes it even um, more difficult and time consuming when APD and our investigators have to shoot down these rumors and it feeds into a narrative that will not help us get this monster off of the street. So we just ask that as you are reporting on this murder, or any murder in this city, um, that you please get your information directly from APD and be responsible and not running with unnamed sources uh, who likely don't know what they are speaking about. Um, also, um, Dr. Del Rio, as I said, is going to give more information on where we are with COVID. So I will come back and I will address uh, matters related to COVID um, after we are able to hear from Chief Bryant and also hear from Deputy Chief Hampton. Chief Bryant. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning. Uh, I'm here to speak to you as it relates to where we are with violent crime in the city of Atlanta. Uh, 
like many of our other large cities and cities throughout our country, we continue to face this challenge. Here in the city of Atlanta, we are seeing strides and we are, we've implemented our summer plan. That summer plan has begun to play significant dividends where we are starting to see the numbers constrict. Clearly is not where we would like them to be, but we are seeing levels of improvement as it relates to where, where we are with violent crime. Right now, overall crime is up 12% uh, in the city, with majority of that being around property crime. We're actually 11% down as it relates to where we were in 2019, the most stabilizing year, and it uh, gives us the ability to address a baseline. We attribute this, to again, to our summer plan, and which allowed us to expand our personnel into more targeted locations where we were seeing historical incidences of crime. Additionally, this is done with the partnership of our federal partners, our state partners, and our uh, local partners. Our federal partners, the FBI, ATF, Secret Service, uh, the U.S. Marshal Task Force, uh, have really helped us out in the space of the Operation Phoenix. Operation Phoenix was implemented over just a year ago, uh, and so what that does is allow us to target some of our most violent offenders. It's much different than going after repeat offenders. This gives us the ability to put our violent offenders into a federal system much quick, much quicker than we typically would have. Additionally, establishing the nuisance uh, property uh, under the mayor's leadership this gave us the ability to target the locations that where we were seeing violent crimes, as well as uh, um, issues that were quality of life concerns to the community. Uh, we've been able to reduce the number of violence that we are seeing around this, uh, locate, these locations. This is done with the partnerships of many of our state departments as well as our city departments. I'll speak briefly about the pool shooting. Uh, Again, uh, another horrific incident where a child was shot in one of our pools. Uh, but to the work of the men and women of the Atlanta Police Department and to the homicide unit, uh, it was brought to a quick resolve. Now, the person, we have a warrant and we've identified that shooter. We still are in search of uh, bringing him into custody. I'll speak just briefly about the shooting uh, that we had at the Bowen Home Reunion. Uh, that was an officer-involved shooting. Uh, I cannot speak in detail to that matter. Uh, I'll be releasing the video uh, shortly. There's not much to see. I have allowed uh, the NAACP to take a look at it, uh, and we'll be releasing it soon. But there's not much to it, and there's not much that I can speak to because it's still an ongoing investigation. And then lastly, the incident in Piedmont Park. It was my decision to call upon the FBI uh, after having conversations with Chief Hampton on what we had in the park. Uh, I called upon the FBI, one, because they are a strong partner that provides a, a level of resources that we just don't have. Uh, and I did so based on the information that he provided. As the mayor stated, this homicide, this murder was outside the norm of what we would typically see. Uh, the mayor stated that many of our homicides that we have in the city of Atlanta was acquaintance. But this was so unique uh, that I felt that we needed to collaborate with as many resources as we possibly can, uh, and therefore I asked uh, Chief to get in touch with the FBI immediately. The difference in doing so is that we uh, have the ability to get the, the FBI on the front end as opposed to bringing them in lately. And again, I attribute this to our partnership and the relationship that we have with that agency. Uh, and so I am co I'm confident that we are doing everything that we possibly can. I've had conversations with the DA's office and the sheriff's office, and everyone is willing to contribute resources to this. So uh, without going, no, I'd be remiss if, I, if I, I have to reiterate what the mayor stated about false information. We have to make sure that the information that is going out to the public is factual. I think that quite often what we are now hearing is a lot of sensationalism and misinformation as it relates to what we're seeing, and it is really causing us more problem. 
especially with the community that we serve. We have to maintain a level of integrity as it relates to this case. It is important to us that we resolve this and not be distracted by misinformation. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, as many of you are aware, on July 28th in the early morning hours, uh, Katie and her dog uh, Bowie was tragically taken from our community. Katie was a uh, devoted daughter, sister, wife, a friend of many. She was a talented songwriter. Uh, she was a vocal advocate for social justice. Now it's time for us to give justice for Katie. As the mayor said, as Chief Ryan said, uh, there's a lot of information out there. We as the police department and our investigators, we have a duty to abide by the laws of the courts and the rules of evidence. We'll be uh, wrong to put out a lot of information in the public. We thank you for your concerns. We thank you for your uh, cooperation. Most importantly, we thank you for your patience. Uh, this is going to take time. I assure you that the men and women that are assigned to this investigation are working around the clock. Uh, as, as Chief Bryan just said, the integrity of this investigation uh, is, is important. There are things that uh, only the individual or individuals responsible for this know. This is very important when we apprehend them. This is what we use as to further our case in order to bring them to justice. I know there are a lot of questions. Uh, and again, we're going to continue to provide information when we can and when we deem it's necessary. Uh, what will happen shortly after this press conference, we'll be releasing uh, still photos of six individuals uh, that were uh, in and around Piedmont Park. And what we're hoping is that these individuals will come forward and to let us know, and hopefully that they saw something uh, while in the park. I'm not saying that they're responsible, I want to be clear about that. Uh, but we believe that we're hoping that they saw something that could further our, and help our investigation. Again, this, the, the investigation, the integrity investigation is, is key. Uh, but I just thank everyone for their cooperations and, again, for their patience. Uh, and just a couple of things before we transition to COVID. I know there have been several rumors that there is a serial killer on the loose in our city. We don't have any evidence of that. Um, also that this was a hate crime. As of now, we don't have any proof of that as well. Um, this is not to say that things will not change, but at this point, we don't have any confirmation of either of those things, so I want to clarify that. Um, as you all know, we reinstituted the mask mandate in the city of Atlanta. We were scheduled, uh, we were beginning our phased reopening plan. We have been data driven from the very beginning. These have not been decisions related to COVID that we've made based on a whim. It's been based on the science and the data. Fulton County and DeKalb County, uh, in which Atlanta lies, have been designated by the CDC as areas of high transmission. Um, you all also know we had a five-phase reopening plan. We were making great progress. Uh, we were almost, I believe, were we at phase four? We were at phase four. Uh, but with the surge in the Delta variant, we've gone backwards. And we've always said that we would follow the data. And we are very close to going back to phase two. So I encourage everyone please do not wait to get vaccinated it is not worth it i am the mother of four as you all know two of my children are not of age to receive their vaccinations yet my two oldest have been vaccinated my 10 year old twins have not one of my twins has severe asthma so if not for yourselves, if you are fortunate enough to be healthy, although many healthy people, young people, are not able to fight off COVID, think about our children 
who don't have the choice as to whether or not they will be vaccinated. You all know we have some of the highest asthma rates in the country, high rates of obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, our mortality rates, especially for black women, and breast cancer are higher than the national average. Our mortality rates for prostate cancer in black men, higher than the national average, higher uh, than many others in the community. I share that with you because so many of us are vulnerable. So please, 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 please get vaccinated. I've been vaccinated. I'm very happy that I've been vaccinated, but until we are able to turn the corner, uh, we are going to have to continue to take precautions like wearing our mask. That's the reason we've gone back to a mask mandate in the city of Atlanta. Um, our vaccination rates, surprisingly, in the city are actually higher uh, than the state average. I believe the last numbers I saw, and I'll let Dr. Del Rio speak in more detail, were around 46 percent of people who received two doses um, across the state and about 49 percent in the city of Atlanta. So we are leading the way in the state, but we still have a very, very, very long way to go. And with that, Dr. Del Rio, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning, everybody. Uh, I wish I was not here. You know, we all are tired of COVID, and I'm tired of COVID. And I think we, you know, it's it's may it's it's totally understandable that people are frustrated. We were making a remarkable progress in our country, and in great part, we were making remarkable progress because of vaccinations. Vaccinations were really uh, doing well, and we were making incredible progress. Cases were coming down, but something changed over the last month. And what changed is the emergence of the Delta variant. The Delta variant, as, as CDC has says, said, changes the game. It, it really changes the game. And it does that because this variant is highly transmissible. It's about 60 percent more transmissible than prior variants. And what that means is that you're more likely, CDC has said it's about as transmissible as chicken pox. And maybe some of you didn't have chicken pox, but those of us that had chicken pox, we know that our parents, if somebody had chicken pox, the rest of the kids and the family had chicken pox because it's, it's that transmissible. It's not something you can stay away from. And that just tells you the difference in the past variant is that if one person was infected, that person led to about two and a half to three people getting infected, and those people then two and a half and three, and so on and on and on. With the new variant, it's about one person infects six to eight people. And then each one of those infects six to eight, and you go on and on, and that causes this very rapid rise that we're seeing. It's almost like a rocket. This exponential growth is because this rapid transmission. Uh, what we know is that uh, the best, what has not changed, though, is that the vaccines continue to be very effective. And while you have read that there are so-called breakthrough cases, they are still uncommon. And if you see in the Georgia Department of Public Health website, they publish some very useful information that I want to highlight. Of the about 4 million people vaccinated in the state, there have been close to 5,000 people who have tested positive. 118 have been hospitalized and just 24 have died of COVID. Thus, if you're fully vaccinated, if you receive your two doses, your risk, and you've done two weeks after your two doses, so you let your body the time to produce the, the immunoglobulins, et cetera, your risk of being hospitalized or die from COVID is about 0.002%. So it's about the risk you have about, you know, walking outside and getting hit by lightning. It's pretty low. Uh, so I want to emphasize your best protection against this Delta variant is vaccination. And as the mayor said, get yourself vaccinated. We, as a country, about 50 percent of people have been vaccinated. That means we still have about 90 to 100 million Americans who are eligible for vaccination and have not yet been vaccinated. Here in the state of Georgia, we're lower than the national average. We're better in the city of Atlanta, but we're still not where we need to be. And therefore, we need to tell everybody, get vaccinated. You should have been vaccinated a month ago to be protected, but even getting vaccinated today is still useful and will protect you in, against COVID. Um, I want to, to, you know, to say that, emphasize that in the hospitals, we're seeing an increase in hospitalizations across the state. 97% of hospitalized patients have not been vaccinated. So again, 
it is really the vaccines that will protect you from getting hospitalized and dying. On July 27, the CDC recommended that everyone who is in a high area for COVID transmission uh, starts wearing a mask indoors in spaces, regardless of their vaccination status in public spaces. CDC defines as high, and you can see the map of, you know, red is high. It's any place where there's more than 50 new infections per 100,000 residents or more than 8% test positivity rate. Here in, in Fulton and DeKalb, our new cases are actually not at that level. They're about 25 per 100,000. But our test positivity is over 8%. It's close, closer to 95 to 10% in both places. That's why CDC has designated us high areas of transmission because the test positivity rate is high. And that's the reason why uh, it is recommended that people wear masks. Masks, you know, do help uh, spread, uh, stop the spread. The main reason, though, that we wear a mask is to protect others, primarily the unvaccinated, from getting infected. And this includes, as the mayor said, you know, kids under the age of 12 who are not eligible for vaccination. So by me wearing a mask, if I have kids at home, I'm in a way protecting them. Uh, so masks do help uh, cut down coronavirus transmission, but it's really vaccines that offer the first best protection. So I want to emphasize that over and over. We need to do, and there's been so much vaccine misinformation that we need to just, just stop that and just tell people, and, you know, this morning I was very pleased to see New York Times Secretary Azar, former Secretary of HHS Azar, say in an op-ed, vaccines are not Republican or Democrat. Vaccines are needed for everybody and everybody needs to be vaccinated. And again, we all need to say, get vaccinated as soon as you can. And if we do that, I think we'll turn the corner on this pandemic. With that, we will open up for questions. Any, just um, staying on COVID real quickly, um, any plans for another lo uh, lockdown in Seattle? Now, as of now, we're just asking people to wear their mask and get vaccinated. And again, we're going to continue to be uh, cognizant of the science and the data. Our advisory group was composed of health, public health leaders like Dr. Del Rio. We had business leaders on board, we had community leaders. So it, the phased recommendations and approach uh, were, we, we came together with those recommendations based on the cross section of people in the community. So if you look at our dashboard, uh, we're not there yet. We're just asking people, please wear a mask and please get vaccinated. It's, it's very simple. Just a request. Would it be possible to get a copy of those photos of the people that you're looking for that in connection with Jeanette's case before the noon show so we can get those out there? That has already been released to our public <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Morris. Uh, thank you, Mayor. On the question of masks, uh, is it essentially the honor system? The president of the Georgia Restaurant Association says, look, don't expect Yeah, well, you know, Mars, part of the feedback that we got from business owners when we had the mask a mandate in place last time was that it made it easier on them, that they were not uh, having to pick and choose um, how they communicated with their customers, that people would know when you come into the city, you should have on a mask. Now, when you are eating, it's impossible to wear a mask, so we're, we're asking people, and again, be thoughtful about the servers. Uh, just if you're in a restaurant and you're eating, of course you can't wear a mask. Uh, but we're asking at all other times that you please do so. And thankfully, we have pretty long summers here, so there will be opportunities for people to dine outside. I know a lot of restaurants have made changes into their physical footprint. And we're just asking people to be thoughtful and respectful of other people. Mayor Bottoms, can you just talk about uh, the surveillance cameras? I know APD late last night confirmed that all their cameras in the area were working properly. Uh, we've been told uh, by multiple people, including uh, some of your spokespeople, that I guess you guys maintain the cameras inside the park. I know the ADAC had reports that yeah. the cameras weren't working. What is the status? How many cameras in the park are there? Were they working the night of this murder? 
So I'm going to let our chief operating officer and our, our deputy CEO, C, deputy chief operating officer, also speak to that. Um, but this is part of the reason we've asked for the expansion of the camera network throughout the city. And you all recall a few weeks ago I shared with you our plans to use, our hopes to use $70 million in federal funding. Uh, previously, we had already announced the expansion of 250 cameras for Operation Seal Shield. This is the reason why we need more cameras in our city. Uh, but specifically, our COO will give details on uh, the cameras in, in and around Piedmont Park. Uh, one more question before um, we chime in on that. Um, what is your message to the LGBTQ community? Uh, we've been, I've been contacted by coworkers, many people in my community. They're terrified. They feel like somebody's out to get them. Um, it sounds like this is still an ongoing investigation. What can you say to that community that's scared now that they can't use that green space? They feel like if they go there, they may be targeted. Well, uh, again, and this is for our LGBTQ community and Atlanta as a whole, uh, we are dealing with a horrific murder in Piedmont Park. So we are still looking for a suspect. As far as we know, as we stand here today, it is safe to frequent the park, but we're also asking people um, to use safeguards go out in pairs, be, be thoughtful um, about your surroundings and all of the things that we constantly tell people. But again, as of now, we do not know uh, if this is a targeted hate crime. There's nothing that indicates that as of now. Uh, but this was a very gruesome murder, uh, unusual for any number of reasons. And, I, and I'll, I'll just be frank with you. Uh, one of my kids came to me and said to me, there's a serial killer loose in Atlanta. Uh, and that's when I became aware that this was circulating on social media, and honestly, he was freaked out. So it, this is not to diminish what any particular community is feeling, but it's just to um, remind people that everyone's on edge. And when we have information that is not accurate, it makes it that much more challenging, but as of now, there's nothing that we have that shows that the LGBTQ community is being targeted. Uh, but part of the reason that we have the representation that we do here today uh, is to remind people that we are very sensitive to those concerns, and there are a number of people embedded within the mayor's office and also within the police department uh, who stand ready and available to address any issues and concerns that anyone may have. Have you thought um, about, have you, just a quick question on the park, park hours, have you thought about moving up the closing time of the park hours, perhaps even temporarily, so it's not open at dark? No, we, we haven't, and there's nothing that indicates that that needs to happen at this point, but with everything, we, we take it day by day and we evaluate day by day. If it uh, at some point becomes uh, apparent that that's something that's needed, then certainly we will consider that. But as of now, uh, it's, there's nothing that uh, shows us that that's necessary. But I know there are a lot of questions about the camera, so I'm going to ask John Keene, our COO, to address those. Thank you, Mayor. So let me just start and stress that this is still an ongoing investigation. We are still trying to gather information from as many sources as possible, including the cameras, there's nine cameras that have been referred to that are within Piedmont Park. And so we are still working with vendors to try and determine if there's any information we can get off of those cameras. To provide a little context, in 2008, there was a pilot that was done to install those nine cameras. In 2017, there's an assessment that was done. Ultimately, those cameras are based on obsolete te technology. If they do not integrate with our uh, video integration center. We have not removed those cameras because we do still think that their presence is valuable. As the mayor mentioned, she has committed and made a priority to invest in cameras across the city. We work closely with APD, Parks is involved, the Police Foundation and others, the communities to determine where those investments are going to go and how we should best prioritize investments in the placement of cameras based upon the data. And so that's what we'll continue to do as we look to decide where we make investments in our camera infrastructure moving forward. Has 
and then last one, clear, cameras yeah. not being worth, not being, you know, um, working the night of the murder. What steps are you all taking to uh, ensure that they are working in the future? And what's the timeline? So let me reiterate, we're still working to determine if there's any information we can get from those cameras. As I mentioned, the cameras were installed as a pilot in 2008. The technology for those particular cameras is obsolete. And so now we have to look at if we're going to replace and make investments, uh, whether in the park or around the park, which we have made investments in the camera infrastructure around the park, and we'll continue to assess as we, as the mayor has stated, we prioritize installing 250 cameras by the end of December, prioritize what the locations for those cameras are. We have recently prioritized investment in camera infrastructure around recreation centers as well as parking lots in our parks, and we'll continue to assess that moving forward. So is this Piedmont is going to move to the top of the list then as a result of this? Piedmont. Um, I'm sorry. I just, I just want, don't go. Um, I just want to remind you all, we haven't had a murder in Piedmont Park in about 12 years. So this is a very unusual situation, uh, but the reality is the vast majority of our parks don't have cameras in them. And so well, certainly when we have new information and, and we have something as horrific as has, uh, has happened at Piedmont Park, we will have to evaluate it, but we've got to evaluate an entire city. Um, and make a determination. We don't want to make knee-jerk, have knee-jerk reactions, but uh, certainly it is something that we will have to consider, but we're going to have to consider the entire city with a limited amount of resources. And again, the, 200, the expansion of the 250 cameras is just the beginning, it's not the end. Um, so we will take this into consideration, but we're going to look at crime stats. We're going to be in consultation with APD and Parks and Rec and see where our most challenged areas are. Um, and certainly this will be a part of that conversation. So is this a funding issue? Is that what, what happened pretty much? You, you said 2008 you guys did the pilot, and since then now it sounds like the technology is outdated. Uh, so is this just wasn't in the budget to get new cameras? What, what was the answer? So I, I wouldn't say it was a funding issue. The question became when you replace the cameras, as I mentioned before, we are making a priority of investing in our camera system and our camera, camera network. At the end of the day, we have to assess where those installations are going to go across the city. Parks is one of the areas that we consider as we do that. Okay, one more, one more question, um, just to be clear. So you, the city is in charge of managing the cameras that are inside the park, um, but there's not like a process that you're checking so for all of our new cameras that we install, we integrate them to the video integration center, and we have a process to make sure that we understand when cameras have issues, and when they do have issues, we have contracts in place with vendors, and we have a process to get those cameras up and running as quickly as possible. These cameras, again, were installed in 2008. They're not integrated with the video integration center and the technology is obsolete. But for all the cameras that we are installing now, that's a critical part of the process. Um, Deputy Chief Hampton has something to add. I know there's a lot of emphasis on, on cameras. Uh, the men and women uh, and the investigators of the Atlanta Police Department are talented. There are many homicides that we solve without the aid of any technological equipment. So I assure you that, again, we are doing everything we can and the evidence is going to dictate where our investigation goes. The cameras are just a tool that usually just helps us and aids us in investigations. But I have some talented men and women over in 226 Piedmont Peachtree Street that know how to solve crimes without anything other than just the evidence at hand. The community, we ask you if you saw, you heard anything to come forward. You can call Crime Stoppers where you can remain anonymous. But we're also asking if you saw anyone with un, any unexplained injuries. A intense uh, attraction to the, this case in the media. A change in appearance, change in hair color, change in any type of facial hair. An absence of school, work, come forward. Give us a call. There's nothing insignificant that we won't take and there's nothing that we will not follow up on. So I assure the public, we are working this. 
The cameras don't, don't let the cameras get in the way. We have the talent and we're going to bring justice to this case. That, that is correct. Speak about if the, you had any persons of interest to date, if you've had any cooperation with talking to people who may have been witnesses, tell us what is working well in this case. Working is our, our tactical canvas, going back out to the crime scene, retracing our steps, talking to neighbors, asking people what they heard, what they saw. Uh, so yes, that's helping. Uh, we, we are following up on everything. Uh, but yes, let's be clear, those are not suspects. Those are individuals that we know were inside the park uh, and we just want to know what they saw. Just at that time frame, we weren't there. So we're just hoping if there is a vehicle, is there anything, a bike, a scooter, anything that can help us further our investigation. Yeah. 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 Just the Dogwood Festival this weekend. Uh, is there a plan to uh, increase security or just um, the usual what you guys do? It's, it's normally, uh, again, we, we still have our cops team that patrol the park. We have Zone 5 officers that still patrol the park. The Dogwood Festival is, is, is Dogwood Festival has been here for years and we continue to provide security, so. Deputy Chief, uh, do you guys have any details? Even if you cannot release it, can you confirm said efforts are working? What is working here? Do you have any description of a suspect, any piece of information about a suspect? As I said earlier, the time and place will come when we're ready to release additional information. Yeah, you so. you a bike, a vehicle, anything? You removed a bike from the scene that morning. Did that have anything to do with the case? There are a lot of questions that you, you want to know. Uh, as, as I stated before, it's important. Uh, we can't try it here in the media. I know it, again, I know it's frustrating. Uh, the but the check of the dog, the victim's dog, for DNA, does that look promising? It's, it's part of evidence, so yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time for two more questions. Mayor yeah, Bottom, Mayor Bottom, switching back to COVID, you said we were pretty close to reverting to phase two. Can you kind of just explain the criteria needed for that? And also, do you find it harder for, do you find that people are not following the guidance as much right now because of how far along we are in this pandemic, not to mention maybe some conflicting uh, guidance from the governor? Well, you know what I would say, just as it relates to our phases, take a look at our dashboard. You can find it online so you can see what our criteria is. It's been laid out for over um, a year. Uh, there certainly has been a comfort level with people who've been vaccinated and, and people who are just fatigued by COVID. And so we, uh, you know, it would be great if we were on the same page as a state as a whole. Uh, to be consistent the way that many other states are and, and the way that many other states turned the corner on COVID uh, before we did. But it, it is what it is at this point. And as I've said from the beginning of this pandemic, God bless the child who's got his own. And in Atlanta, we are going to do uh, everything that we need to do uh, to make sure that people are able, able to weather this pandemic and if the rest of the state comes along great uh, but it, but if not we'll take responsibility for our city but i can say uh, there are mayors throughout the state who are leading you've got van johnson in savannah uh, hardy davis in augusta you've got our uh, kelly gertz in athens so there we there are many of us who are on the same page uh, but it's unfortunate that there's a lack of leadership uh, at the highest level in our state. So what went wrong in your relationship with Governor Kemp? Or is there anything the next mayor can do to sort of repair that relationship? I mean, every, every mayor will have to lead accordingly. And I've said this before, the governor and I work on things that we can agree on. Um, our approach to COVID uh, has been very different. I'll just remind people the governor uh, has many responsibilities, but he is the chief law enforcement officer of the state. So you can talk to him about crime as well. Uh, he is also uh, the chief health officer responsible for public health. So you can talk to him about COVID as well, and he can answer for himself. But we'll continue to work with our work with the state on things that we can agree on, and those things have we can't, uh, we'll, we'll lead as we always have. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes this press conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the media today. Thank you. Thank you so much.